welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds and today I have something a little bit different for you. I am going to be working for this video on an... Ooh, I can hear the pieces clattering. An Imposse Puzzle. There it is. It's called Bits and Pieces and it should be pretty obvious really why it's called that. Basically it is a picture of a jumbled up pile of jigsaw pieces and I think if I'm not mistaken that the jigsaw pieces uh, in the image are from other Imposse Puzzles. The reason I believe that is because I happen to know that Imposse Puzzle have done a dice puzzle where it's just dice all over the image. I know that because I did that one when I was younger um, and I still lived uh, with my family at home and we all kind of did it together and even with four or five of us at it at a time it took forever to do I do remember that but I also remember enjoying it so I think that these pieces on this box might be from other Imposse puzzles and I'm pretty sure because there are pieces here with like what look like Smarties or some other kind of similar candy on it. And I think that the Imposse Puzzle have done one like that as well. So yeah, it's, well, it's a jumbled up mess really. <laughs> um, so it looks really challenging, but I guess that is the whole point of an Imposse Puzzle. Um, it does say on the box, infuriating and frustrating fun. So I think, I think maybe they may they may achieve the infuriating and frustrating part. Uh, <laughs> we shall see when I uh, get started on it. Now, you'll have heard the pieces rattling in the box when I lifted it up. That is because um, I bought this puzzle used. This was a charity shop purchase and I, I saw it on the shelf and I went for it because of the Imposse puzzle I did when I was younger. It kind of brought back good memories and I took it off the shelf and it's been sitting on my shelf at home for quite a while because, well, basically I was reluctant to start it. <laughs> I, uh, I kept looking at it and thinking, I really need to do that puzzle, and then thinking, well, I'll do another one. Um, but now the time has come. It is 550 pieces, or according to the box, 550 challenging pieces. Um, so it's, it's, you know, a smaller piece count, which helps. Um, and it... I've been, I've been sort of anxious about it and looking forward to it all at the same time. But I thought, uh, I've just done a, a section of my large puzzle and I was ready to, to do a completely different puzzle. And I thought, right, why not? I will give this Imposse puzzle a go. So I have counted the pieces before recording for this video. Um, I didn't, with, you always kind of, you always kind of get that potential problem when you're buying from uh, a charity shop or you're buying a used puzzle you never can tell if there's going to be missing pieces um but I counted them all up and they are all there so I thought I'll do a video on this I think it'll be quite fun so having looked at the pieces and looked at the image I think that my way forward with this one is to sort by shape from the very beginning. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because I can't really use the image to sort because it's a jumbled mess. There's no blocks of color. There's no kind of uniform area where it's all the same. Um, so, I mean, the only time I would really sort by shape when I'm doing a puzzle is if there are large areas where it's all kind of one thing, like a blue sky or a giant red curtain, like in my large puzzle or something like that. Well, this isn't a block of colour, but the whole thing is just jumbled up mess. <laughs> so I'm going to sort by shape from the start. I think... It might, that might have been a slightly overwhelming method if it was a thousand piece puzzle, but with it being 550, I think it will be manageable. Um, and it is, it is um, put in kind of the standard piece shapes. I mean, they might be slightly squished. You have got standard shapes such as that and ones like this. So I can easily sort by shape. And then what I'm going to do is pop the edge together um, as 
per normal and then try and find pieces that uh, are similar shapes along the side that I can put together but we'll see we'll see how it pans out sometimes I have to kind of start the puzzle and sort of get to know it a little bit before I can really come up with a kind of method um, so I suspect that this might be one of those puzzles as well but uh, yeah to start off with I shall be sorting all of the pieces into shape right from the start so I will go ahead and get on with that right now enjoy okay so i've done all the sorting uh but if i can just explain kind of what i've done here because as i was doing this i was just kind of um throwing them together by piece type. Um, but then I realized that even within the piece types themselves, there were distinctive shapes. Um, and I felt that they should be oriented a certain way. So if I can show you what I mean, maybe the easiest one to use is this one. So these are all piece types that have the three outs and one in, but these pieces have a tendency to be tall and narrow, like all these. And I don't know what, what's making me think this, but I believe that they orient in that direction. So portrait, if you like. Um, whereas these, I could put them this way, but then that wouldn't be oriented in a tall and narrow direction, it would be kind of short and wide. So I have put them all kind of a certain way because I believe that is the way that they will go in the puzzle. And that is basically the same for the other pieces too. So for example, these ones, if you if you try and sort of adjust your, your eyes and brain so that you're kind of ignoring the jumbled mess on the pieces themselves and just kind of focus on the shape itself again i realize that these tall ones if you put them in this direction then the two outs were on that side and the two ins were on kind of that side whereas these it's the opposite way around there are some that are a bit more square that aren't particularly tall or wide that i've just sort of guessed um so I could be wrong on those, but as a general rule, that is how I have sorted them. Now, the, the edge pieces are the same. Um, they have the same kind of wide and squashed or tall and narrow kind of feel to them. But I haven't bothered separating those um, in the way I, that I've done the rest. These ones are the standard P shapes, which are sort of... Uh, oriented this way and then you've got these ones which are kind of turned 90 degrees to these ones but obviously still got that tall narrow feel to them so that is how I have sorted them where I've run out of box lids I've used paper um, and I'm hoping that that will help to put this puzzle together uh, quicker but we shall see <laughs> Is the edge done? I started it at six o'clock. It's now it's morning, and it's now six thirty-three. It took me around about half an hour. Um, it was ish difficult. Uh, probably would have been quicker if it was a normal puzzle, but and I was to a certain extent able to use. The textures in the puzzle to piece them together but because it's such a jumbled mess it was kind of hard to just pick them out with my eye with my eyes but um one thing that did help was um 
again, the sort of shape of the pieces, these tall, thin ones, they went together first until I reached a corner on either side. And I actually thought that that left edge was the bottom or the top edge. And until it came out sort of quite narrow and tall and I realised I'd kind of got it in portrait. So I've turned it onto its side so you can see it in landscape now. But the only problem I've really run across is that I don't know which way up it goes. I've tried looking at the box and I cannot see where, where the, the pieces that I can see are on the puzzle. So either the puzzle is bigger than the box picture and I'm seeing pieces that just aren't on there or the puzzle is smaller than the box picture and I'm just not looking kind of far in enough. It doesn't really help that the title cuts across some of the puzzle so you can't see that kind of block of uh, picture on the box but having said all that I don't suppose it really matters. I mean it's not exactly a picture that ought to go a certain way. I mean, it's just an impossible puzzle, so I'll just do it this way. <laughs> So here is progress so far and uh, things I've noticed up to this point are um, firstly, remember I said at the start that the pieces tended to be sort of narrow and tall and I deliberately kind of oriented them that way uh, so that they were like vertically placed uh, because I had a feeling that the the, the tall, narrow pieces might go sort of vertically, like in a portrait uh, orientation. Well, I, I was right to orient the pieces, but I was wrong about the direction that they go. They actually go horizontally. So, but I mean, that's not a problem because I can just kind of turn the box as 90 degrees and I'll be able to sort of see a better perspective of how the pieces fit in and which way they go. So that's helped a lot so far. Um, secondly, I'm not sure if you'll have noticed, but I am working my way in from the corners of this puzzle because um, really it's just purely practical. A corner gives me two sides to place the piece against uh, rather than just one. And therefore, I stand a better chance of finding the pieces at this early stage where I've still got a lot of them. Uh, to choose from. So I've been working in from the corners. Sometimes I'll change corners. So you'll be able to see me kind of moving around the puzzle a lot um, and going from corner to corner um, to try and just keep the puzzle moving along a little bit faster if I kind of come to a halt or anything like that. Um, thirdly, uh, I... I do have... If, if a corner sort of fails me and I'm just taking ages on a piece. Um, this puzzle, I've noticed, does have uh, the occasional part where the cut sort of stops suddenly and there are pieces that stick out a little bit, uh, like just here. And I'm finding, uh, not every time, but I'm finding that most of the time um, the piece that fits in there will be uh, one of the shapes with like a square corner on it. Um, nine times out of 10, that's been the piece that's actually fitted in those sections. So um, sometimes I'm able to uh, kind of start a section in the middle and then work my way out back to the corners and kind of meet the corners there. Um, otherwise, it really is just plugging away at it. Sometimes 
testing every piece to see what works and um, occasionally actually using the image where if a colour overlaps onto the next piece, I can kind of use the image to see which one goes adjacent to it. So I'm using a lot of different methods for this, but I'm finding that it's working quite well and it is coming along steadily. So I shall continue on. So I've really got a load done today. I managed to get a, uh, a stint on it during the day. Usually I do it sort of at the crack of dawn and I get about an hour on it, but uh, I've managed to get a little bit more done today. And now I am at the point where I've got this gap on this side and I've managed to kind of build down and up uh, until they've met in the middle and I've got this bigger gap on this side. But for the most part, this has been kind of building in from the edges, um, working inward. I actually got to a point where I was starting to put together individual bits that weren't attached to the main puzzle yet. And in an effort to try and figure out where these go, for the first time since starting it, I actually really sat and had a really good look at this box to try and figure out where they went. I picked out this one here uh, just to start off with because I kind of homed in on that dice that has the six on it. And I found it straight away. That's here. So I thought, right, well, I still haven't figured out if I'm doing this jigsaw puzzle upside down or not. Because <laughs> to start off with, I couldn't figure it out. And I have realized that I have, in fact, been doing it upside down. So, I mean, if we... <sighs> Not really an image that has a right way up in fairness but if we take it as the way that the box has it um then i have been doing the puzzle upside down so what i'm going to do now before i start to kind of try and figure out where in the puzzle these pieces go i'm going to and that's just determined to fall apart isn't it oh well there we go. I am going to... Oh, for goodness sake. I'm trying to do this with one hand. It's, uh, it's rather difficult. There we go. I am going to turn it <laughs> the right way round. Right. Now, finally, we have it <laughs> the right way up. So, according to the box... This number six dice here, which corresponds with this number six dice here, should go, so there's that bit there. It should go. Ah, there we are, you see. 
it should go somewhere around here. There. So what I was going to do next is do the same thing for all these rows of pieces that I've put together. See if I can find where they go in the puzzle. If possible, attach them like I just did with that one. And if not possible, then I will just leave them in the spot that they're supposed to be. It's very rare that I use a, a puzzle box image to this degree to really figure out where things go. But you have to just use everything that you can get when you're doing a puzzle like this, just all the help you can get. So, um, but this in fairness is the first time I have actually referred to the box since I've started it. So um, yeah, so it's coming along. So I'm gonna try and put these sections in now and figure out where they go. Final three pieces. One. Mm. Two, so even at this point, I'm struggling to get them in. puzzle is finished finally it feels like it's taken ages um yeah it was it was really difficult and it was infuriating and frustrating fun even <laughs> according to the box i would i would agree that that is definitely 
uh, what it was. There were times when I did feel infuriated. In fact, there were many occasions where I was doing the puzzle, talking away to myself, staring at it for ages without putting a single piece in and thinking, wow, this puzzle is infuriating. But I guess that's the whole point of an Imposse puzzle. Um, by and large, uh, my final thoughts on it, by and large, I did enjoy doing the puzzle. I had some gripes with the pieces. They are thin. They are really thin and uh, they have quite a shiny finish to the picture. So uh, when the lights were shining on it, sometimes it was a little bit, um, there was a little bit of glare. Uh, but... <laughs> Also, it was a used puzzle, but even at that, some of the pieces were stuck together and, or, or had been stuck together. And obviously, whoever had done this before me, uh, in the process of taking them apart, um, it had caused rips and things like that. So I was finding a lot of pieces, uh, like the ones in this picture here, where they were just kind of ripped bits of card still attached to the other piece and things like that. So... Piece quality overall, I wasn't that happy with. But as far as doing the puzzle goes and just the just the fun elements of doing a puzzle like this, um, I actually really enjoyed it in spite of myself. And I was really pleased with the finished product. It was bright. Um, you know, once the pieces were in place, it looked like a nice bright puzzle. Um, and it just, yeah, it was, it was a task. It was a task. And there were times occasionally where I had to, um, I had to stop staring at it for so long because the picture's just so chaotic that it started to give me a bit of a headache. <laughs> so overall, I had loads of fun with it. I thought it was really great. A couple of little gripes about the piece quality, but aside from that, I would recommend it. You know, if you are a person that likes a challenge with your puzzles, go for it. This one in particular, um, doable because of the bright colours on it, I would say, and because of the large size of the pieces. It wasn't so hard that I was just taxing away at this hours and hours and hours on end. It was, um, it was doable. It was, progress was steady. Progress was steady. And I think that allowed me to just keep on with it. I think that the dice puzzle I did when I was younger was harder. Um, again, not as many textures on it. It was largely do colours, black and white. There were a few colourful dice, but aside from that, it was largely that. So this one, definitely easier. And I, yeah, I would. If you like this kind of thing, I would say give it a go. Give it a go. Um, so timings wise, I've been a bit more diligent again in this uh, video and I've tried to keep timings uh, as accurately as I possibly can. And I will share those with you just now. Now I'll be looking down a bit because I've got them written down on my iPad screen in front of me because uh, I can't remember them all. But um, basically, I started this puzzle on the 15th of September 2021 and I began by sorting by shape. And that took me 41 minutes. So that was quite a lot of sorting, but it was the entire puzzle that I was sorting from the start and not just by text textures and shades and colours, it was by shape, like from the very beginning. So that took quite a while, but that was 41 minutes. Once that was done, I started on the edge. That took me half an hour. Uh, so not too bad, not too bad. I think that the, um, the shapes of the pieces uh, helped with that because you could, you could tell pretty easily just from the piece shape which ones went together. You didn't really have to focus much on the picture. Um, so that was pretty good. And the rest of the puzzle, uh, I'm just scrolling down a little. Um, the rest of the puzzle took me just over nine hours. So all told from sorting to finishing, uh, this puzzle took me 10 hours and 10 minutes or thereabouts. So hmm, I don't really have anything to compare that to. I don't do many 550 piece puzzles and I do even fewer impossible puzzles. So I, I'm not really sure if that's good or bad. I think, I think quite good. I don't think that's too bad. I'm going to, I'm going to tell myself it's good <laughs> just to make myself feel better. Um, but yeah, so that is how long it took me. And that was just plugging away at it sort of one, two hours a day. 
uh, depending on how busy I was on any given day. Um, but yeah, I, I actually, I really did enjoy this puzzle. So all I need to say now is thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate all your support. Thank you for subscribing and for liking my videos. The other thing I just wanted to quickly uh, thank everyone for as well are um, the comments uh, that some of you put in my videos. Um, I really, really appreciate uh, like constructive feedback. Um, because it tells me what I can do better and it tells me what I'm doing right and things like that. So I do appreciate those comments, but I also um, appreciate questions as well, where people ask me questions because they make me think about things I'd perhaps not thought of before and give me ideas for other videos I can do and things like that. So I really do appreciate your comments. So keep those coming as well. And if you liked this video and you would like to see more of my puzzle videos, then please do like and subscribe uh, for more content. And uh, once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.